I'm on the edge of my seat. I wait as patiently as I can for the aircraft to pull into its deplaning position. My foot is tapping to the rhythm of my accelerated heartbeat. My hands are fidgeting with the backpack straps I managed to pull over without bumping the traveler next to me. My eyes are glancing at my watch every few seconds. Ignoring the messages I keep receiving from family, friends, and some 87212 number, my only focus is to get off this plane. I'm sure you won't miss your flight, hun, insists the traveler next to me. Part of me wants to believe her and acknowledge her kindness, but there's only one thought running through my mind. I need to get off this plane. I feel the aircraft connecting to the deboarding bridge. Just a few more seconds, I try to calm myself. I flinch upon hearing an announcement chime, but unfortunately, it wasn't the right signal. I check my watch twice within the same minute. I have exactly five minutes to get on the next plane. Another chime. This is your captain speaking. We have a passenger whose connecting flight will be leaving shortly, and we'd like to make sure they arrive on time to board. I guess the captain didn't need to see the distressed look on my face. Of course, he knew that it wasn't my fault the San Diego flight boarded late. As soon as I hear the correct chime play, I see the passengers start to stand in their seats, patiently waiting. They're waiting for me. Without addressing their service to me, I scoot off my aisle seat and I dash through the cabin. I even hear a few cheers like, go, you can make it, and you could do it. And just like my time running track in high school, the cheers only make me run faster. My heavy steps bang against the gate steel floor. I finally reach the daylight of the DFW, the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Looks from the gate attendant and departing passengers don't phase me. While researching my connecting flight over the last leg, I found that my next gate was just across the pier. I know exactly where I need to go. At this point, I'm like Tom Cruise, and this race was my mission impossible. I have to get on this plane, and I don't care who or what is in my way. I'm sliding past families, taking their kids to food courts, adult men chattering over call to their business colleagues, and a captain and his crew leaving for their next journey in the opposite direction. It feels like nothing can stop me now. That's when my stride begins to falter. I pass the walkway, and I start to see there's less activity and less people on this side of the terminal. It's just as dead as a western ghost town. Am I early? No, I can't be early, but if I'm not on time, I must be. My thoughts catch up to me when I read the screen above the entrance. Gate closed. The passengers I thought I was meant to travel with and the plane I thought I was meant to be on are nowhere to be found. If I hadn't been fueled for the past 30 minutes on adrenaline, I would have cried. But even though my mind is spinning, the rest of the DFW is unfazed. To the right of me, a mother cry comforts her crying infant as she rocks her back and forth in her arms. In the middle of an aisle, a college group of students are holding their luggage, talking about their summer plans of drinking away their breakups and betrayals. At the Starbucks next to me, a barista continues making drinks not because she loves to do it, but based on the mundane look on her face, it's because she has to. The very unsympathetic gate attendant gives me a smirk that tells me this wasn't the first time today a passenger missed their flight. He probably thinks it's my fault. There's no point in telling him otherwise. The plane is gone and I am still here. Nobody knew anything about the California girl stranded in a Texas airport. Standing in an empty gate lounge, I have to choose between fight or flight, although my second option is already out of sight. I know I'm not gonna be stranded and stunned in an international airport. Honestly, I can't afford to be both. A life raft, I pray, a safety device, my device. I scroll through my text messages and check the one left by 87212 Southwest Airlines. Their message reads, you have been rebooked to MDW on flight 2348. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be. Immediately, the customer service desk draws me in from across the pier. The empathetic attendant enters my flight information into the system, and within minutes, he hands me my second chance in ticket form. No strings attached. All I had to do was wait exactly three hours and 16 minutes for the next flight. I look out the large window behind the desk and as I view the sun beginning to set, I can finally see the terminal lights begin to peek through the dimming Texan sky. I choose a seat from an open row to gather myself and then decide to give my dad a call to update him on the situation. As I type in his contact, there's a sensation in my fingers that for some reason tries to hold me back. Of course, he answers on the first ring. Hi, buddy. Hey, Dad. 
I explain myself knowing immediately what he's about to say. I brace for impact knowing his words often had the power to brand me like cattle. This is why I told you to get a direct flight, he states firmly. Why couldn't you just listen to me the first time? We discuss details prior to my trip as I excitedly share how on my own I booked my hotel and flights. He insisted on paying more for a direct flight, but of course I answered much like most college students would, prioritizing savings over safety. I could barely hear his loving concern as a father over the wounding words that told me something I already knew. I disappointed him. Hanging up the phone call brings back an all too familiar feeling. I don't know how to stop the tears when they begin to bubble up in me like a boiling kettle. The heat in my chest is too much pressure to keep it any longer. And if I try, there would be no one to save me in this sea of preoccupied passengers. Looking out the window this time, it was much harder to see any lights left under the dark Texan sky. To avoid the utter embarrassment of being a young girl crying alone in the middle of an airport, I breathe. I breathe in and I breathe out. And I keep breathing until I ground myself, though it feels that the ground is 30,000 feet below. I catch a glimpse of a kind woman that passes through the aisle to my left, strolling her luggage in a poised matter. She's holding a sleeve drink that reminds me of my practices over quarantine. When I would feel overwhelmed, my escape was to journal and drink my tea in hopes to slow my scorching mind. I can faintly remember what it was like to feel in control after. I let go of my last breath, wipe my teary eyes. I swing my travel backpack on, pat down my layered tee and cargo sweatpants, and head north in a quest to find my peace. The Starbucks line is long for my liking, so I walk a little further to find another option. I see more families around me, fathers and their daughters, mothers and their sons, the children wouldn't know what they had until where they were taking their first steps on their own across the country, navigating life without any guidance. The way their parents hold their hands so tight makes me grip my backpack straps even tighter, reminding me of my reason to keep moving forward. I run into Pete's Coffee this time. They are selling a soul-warming jasmine tea that perks my ear just by the sound of it. I find a seat along the benches opposite of the bar with a beautiful earthy mural crafted behind me. The sea sleeve softly warms my hands and tranquilizes the restless rhythm. Unlike my mind at times, my body knew how to avoid the burn of a boiling brew. After a few cold breaths out, the taste is even better than I can imagine. It's simple, yet so soothing. I forget to realize at times there's no ulterior motive behind me being in a place as simple as this coffee shop. Not to be anything I'm not, not to give critique for their craft, but plainly being served in this coffee shop. Before I leave, I make it a point to give my compliments to the barista. I tell her how she may not understand how much I needed this tea, but that I greatly appreciate the time she took to make it. You know, I didn't think I was doing enough today, she responds. Thank you. If only she knew. A classical bookstore catches my eye across the coffee shop. I cross the pier flowing through a school of students on a summer break field trip when a young boy with a tall strap stature rams into my shoulder, being shoved by one of his friends. I'm so sorry, are you okay? He subconsciously asks, still walking past me. He catches up to his friends and they're giving him crap for being such a klutz. I couldn't help but feel bad for him. The student's chatter was replaced by a comforting silence, broken only by the occasional sniffle of a fellow bookworm. The older books have a potent, unmistakable smell. I ran my fingers along the spines and with each touch, a connection to a different time and place. The antiques displayed randomly throughout the store remind me of simpler times. The stories that I read throughout my childhood ranging from romance and fantasies were patiently waiting to be adored. The first Harry Potter book peeked out from its snug shelf and I began to flip through its worn pages. No matter the detour, Harry, Ron, and Hermione would always find their way back on their journey even when professors like Snape and McGonagall would advise against it. Growing up, I felt more like a Hermione in a sense, feeling that I needed to follow the rules. I would be the one to keep my friends, the Rons and Harrys, from any wrong step that could mean a matter of life or death or worse, expulsion. My escape from the rule following life was always books. My mind had the privilege of wandering carelessly through the fantasy world without Worry of making a wrong choice because there would never be a consequence for one. There were plenty of routes to take and everyone would have a different idea of which path was the right one. But what if things had to go wrong for something else to go right? 
I've had this insanely high expectation of how my travel plan should be laid out. Of course, when it failed, I found myself back in the never-ending cycle of trying to be perfect. I'm starting to believe that this plan was never meant to be perfect. Maybe my dad couldn't understand my choice, at least not at first, but it wasn't up to me to change his mind. What threw me off wasn't missing my opportunity, it was letting down the people that I cared most about, maybe even a little bit more than I cared about myself. But they aren't the ones stuck in this situation, are they? I can take all the wrong turns that I want, and when I fall, then I try again. And I try again, and again, and again. A smile tugs my lips. The frustration of missing a flight morphs into this sense of anticipation. The question sparks like a matchstick. How can I make the most out of being in Texas while constrained to the airport walls? I continue on the trail through the terminal until my belly begins to rumble like the floorboards of a hex Texan honky-tonk. White and orange hues overpower the line of colorful travelers hungry for a seemingly popular meal. Whataburger was a Texas legend I'd never experienced. Not many California natives could say they tried it, and for the Sanchez family, I would be the first. Although my seemingly perfect plan crumpled faster than my neighbor's number 14 honey butter chicken biscuit, I dared to keep going. I finished my meal while of course maintaining my In-N-Out burger loyalty, and I checked my watch for the first time in three hours. I have 15 minutes before boarding. I almost wish to enjoy the rest of the adventure a little while longer. If trying something new was all I gained from this experience, then, my, then I am grateful that I would, I would leave the airport with more food in my belly than I started with. My journey never turned out how I expected. Sure, I made it to Chicago and had an amazing time in a brand new city, but it's the surprises that often make the experience worthwhile. Sometimes all it takes is a moment to reevaluate a detour, arrive proudly with a ticket in hand, and ultimately connect the flight to turn what could be adversity into adventure. In all my travels, I plan to go with God, and I pray you all will too. Thank you. Ana Sanchez.